What's up, Wolsters? Welcome back to the channel. So, uh, I've been a little bit busy this past few weeks, you know, with the holidays and all that. So, it, it, it's been a little bit difficult for me to get any videos out. So, I want to apologize. And for everybody, all of you all still sub to me, thank you for bearing with me. So, what I wanted to talk about today is something that I think is big time misunderstood. All right. It, it, I, I, I'm constantly seeing people basically asking, how do you know? How do you know this exists? How, how do you know for sure it was racism? What am I talking about? Well, racism, but not just racism. I'm talking about systemic racism. Okay, and the reason I want to talk about this is because of this case that I saw about a black doctor, Susan Moore, who got COVID and then died from COVID. And she was reporting feeling pretty discriminated against because she was black at the hospital right like like the that she had she been white she would have been treated better and so i know that in situations like these you know instances of this type of racism a lot of people that are sort of skeptical you know ask questions like well how do you know it was because of race and so i wanted to talk about that a little bit okay so so first off let, let, let's go, let's go over what happened here okay so so susan moore again a doctor black doctor got covid um uh but she tested COVID for positive for covid in on november 29th okay maybe like seven days later she was hospitalized and then she ended up dying on december 20th okay and while she was in the hospital, she was, you know, reporting through social media that the doctors were not being very attentive, that they were sort of dismissing her complaints of, of like pain and, and shortness of breath. And, and you, she quoted the doctors as saying, or one of the doctors as saying things like, you're not even short of breath, right? She had to beg to receive remdesivir. All right. And that despite her pain, the doctor was just telling her like, like that they were, she felt like it was the doctor were sort of in a hurry to just send her home and that she was made to feel like she was a drug addict. Right. When she was asking for like pain medication, they were like iffy about her, her, you know, her complaints of pain and you know, that, 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 the, that she was only adequately treated after, you know, expressing her concerns about the, the way they were treating her. And, and through social media, you know, she was, she was, uh, re, you know, reporting this. And then she was saying that, like, look, had, had I been white, I would have been treated differently. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people would be like, well, how do you know it was racist? How do you know it was not this or that? And, and, and look, I agree. Okay. In instances like this, even in instances of like George Floyd killing, no, there's nothing that we can point to be like, like, like a smoking and like, oh, that was racism. That was racism. No these instances are just sort of like anecdotes that support overall systemic data right so like so like we know or criminologists know it, it's widely accepted through you know through research and, and, and looking at studies and all of this that there is this systemic racism against African Americans in the criminal justice system right they, they, they get uh, harsher sentences uh, 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 police officers view black individuals as more threatening and, and so therefore they they react a certain way maybe they react with more force all these things as borne out in the data that support like oh yeah look look uh, uh, in the criminal justice system if you look at the data yeah it seems like there's this some sort of systemic racism against African Americans compared to whites right uh, uh, and, and this is the same thing in the healthcare in the healthcare industry, right? This is nothing new. For for example, in this this report that I was reading about Susan Moore, uh, uh, um, cited the New English the, the New England Journal of Medicine that attributed unequal treatment uh, uh, because of enduring racist cultural beliefs and practices, right? And they cited a 2016 study that found that half of white medical students and residents that they held un, uh, unfounded beliefs about uh, intrinsic biological differences between black and white people, right? That that they falsely believe that black patients' uh, complaints of pain are less severe than white patients, right? So like saying that, that when black people com, com, uh, complain of pain, that 
they think that they're being overly, you know, right? That, that they're just exaggerating the pain versus when it's white people, right? And this is again, this is borne out in the in the uh, in the data, right? In, in through sci uh, psychological studies, and there's even this one study through Harvard that you all can go ahead and take. Uh, uh, it's you know, it's about um, racist implicit biases, and and they're unconscious right so it's not like the doctors were purposely being like oh well she's black so so i'm gonna treat her you know unequally or or i'm not gonna believe her complaints of pain no they're just these sort of the unconsciously they just they just come out right like we don't mean to do it and and we all have them we all of us right even people that that understand systemic racism right so like so like i've seen the data in systemic racism and and like to me it's like nah it's like it's it's there right like all these other variables are controlled for and it's just like nope systemic racism it's a fucking thing and so we all have them right um and so here's some more uh some more so sort of uh some more data that's been that sort of uh, supports this this uh, uh, systemic racism in healthcare, right? Check this out. During childbirth, African American mothers are three times more likely to die than white mothers, right? Now, again, you can say, oh, well, well, it, maybe it was because of like pre-existing conditions and and all these other things. But the thing is that that those variables are controlled for, all right? So they get like they get you know they control for like socioeconomic status they control for uh, pre-existing conditions and then they find well yeah they're three times uh, more likely to die and so the question is why is that right and so then they look into it okay um and again they find that these are due to unconscious biases okay uh, again like as a matter of fact here's a really good example i don't know how many of you guys are familiar with this show called what would you do with uh god what's his name um uh, i forget his first name but his name is quinone is a, a tall darker mexican guy um where they'll have like you know a white student uh, uh acting like he's stealing a bike and then when people are walking by that are not in on the you know on this this staged uh, uh sort of theft they'll ask the the you know maybe most people will just walk by but then the like the very few people that do ask the kid like hey what are you doing and the kid says oh I'm, this is my bike I, I lost the key to the lock they're like oh okay but then when there's a black kid uh uh you know way more people stop and ask why he's trying to steal the bike and then they don't accept when the, when the black kid says like oh it's my bike i just lost the key less people believe it right so like if you were to ask those same people that stopped the black kid then then they'd be like no of course i'm not racist right they're 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 unconscious biases that people just like oh, oh you know they just see a black individual and sort of are more predisposed to sort of uh, uh be more suspicious of them okay th th this is what we're talking about when un when we're talking about unconscious biases that perpetuate systemic racism okay you can't point to any of those individuals walking by when they see a white uh, kid acting like he's stealing a bike but then stopping a black person there's nothing that you could point to as like oh they stopped because he was black right it's it's impossible it's just an instance that supports the overall body of evidence that that shows that there is this undoubtedly unequal treatment uh, uh uh you know when it comes to the way black people and white people are treated right so so let me, let me give you guys some more okay uh um so researchers studied uh the race and ethnicity of people who were receiving knee replacements right and coronary bypass surgery right and this is what they found they found that white patients are more likely than than hispanic or black uh, patients to receive those procedures why again because when black individuals or or in, in instances some instances hispanic individuals complain about about knee pain they're taken less seriously than when white people do it right and so therefore they're more likely to to give these knee replacement procedures to white individuals all right uh, uh and then they found a similar pattern this same pattern okay in a study of forty thousand patients four zero thousands so so this is uh, uh um four and and four zeros okay forty thousand patients all right regarding heart attacks uh and cardiac catheterization and, and and which which is a test that that like detects um the blockage of blood vessels all right and so 
they found the same pattern, right? That 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 uh, uh, white individuals are more likely to receive these uh, the necessary procedures uh, compared to, to to black or Hispanics, all right? And the kicker was that it's both black doctors and white doctors equally sort of discriminate. E black individuals and white individuals both have the same unconscious biases, right? And again, this is borne out in the data. When, when black individuals or black police officers, when they're given these like psychologically, uh, psychological unconscious uh, sort of prejudice tests, they score equally as prejudiced unconsciously, right, as white individuals. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter your race, okay? It's this this sort of systemic, uh, it, it's all because of, you know, mass media, uh, the way the way that black individuals are portrayed in movies, in the news, all of these things that contribute, contribute to it uh, that, that, you know, provide people these unconscious biases, right? that that see black individuals as more suspicious right and it doesn't matter if you're black or white again okay and so um um let's see what other thing was there uh uh okay okay so 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 again man it's just you know this actually reminds me of of some studies that i had seen that that were asking the same uh why the same problem is seen when it comes to when it comes to gender all right, because there were there had been some reports that women were twice as likely to die compared to men when they received coronary bypass surgery, right? And so some researchers at, at uh, Cedar Sinai were looking into this. They were wondering why, like, why is it that women are twice as likely to die when they get coronary bypass surgery, right, than men? And they were wondering maybe it's biological, right? Maybe women are like they have like thinner smaller blood vessels maybe something like that right well it was nothing it was nothing like that right so again what they found was unconscious biases for example uh, uh because we sort of you know society has sort of like um, um we know that men tend to have more heart uh, uh conditions than women do well then the doctors Anytime men come in and complain of, of, of chest pain, they take it more seriously, right? When women do, they take it less seriously because of that sort of, while, while it is true that men do suffer from heart conditions way more than women do, it shouldn't really, uh, you know, doctors should sort of account for this when they have female patients. See what I'm saying? So like if a female patient is complaining of like heart, heart pain, it doesn't matter if men if men are victims of, of, of heart conditions more, right? Take it as seriously as you do when a man complains. And, and and because of these unconscious biases, doctors usually don't. And then they have uh, women get their surgery like at the very last, like sort of the, um, uh, once they've exhausted everything else, right? But they're more quick to, to, uh, to assign men to receive these surgeries, right? They're quicker to do it. And so then therefore men uh, survive these surgeries at higher rates that are or twice right as likely to survive these surgeries than women are right because the the doctors haven't exhausted every single option and then it's too late okay and it's because of these undis, unintended discrimination so 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 at the end of the day the reason why i wanted to talk about this about this you know uh systemic uh uh, uh racism is is right to clear the air right to to, to sort of point out look it's not that people are saying like like this happened to me precisely because i'm black or because i'm not white or whatever right it when people point to these this type of discrimination they're talking about about them being an example supporting the overall body of evidence and to tell you the truth I often don't really like when people actually say that, right? Like, this happened to me because I'm black. No, you don't know that, right? You, you don't really know that. You can't really say that. And it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks, you, you know, because you, you don't want to accuse somebody of, like, a police officer of treating you a certain way be, if you're black because they're racist, right? Because they might not be racist and they might have these unconscious biases. So, like, you know, see what I'm saying? It's it's really difficult to do that. It's 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 really tricky. Uh, uh, and so, you know, yeah, I'm one of the people that that think that like you know George Floyd, 
uh, uh, was a victim of of the way at the you know of the way black individuals are treated you know by law enforcement individuals uh, you know compared to whites but it's but but like there's that weird thing right like Derek Chauvin may not have necessarily done it because he was black see what I'm saying he might have reacted on his biases and that you know what this this black guy you know what I, I think I don't really believe him that much I'm gonna put my knee on him and I think he's exaggerating where where when if if it was a white if the, if uh, uh, George Floyd had been white he might not have thought that right he might have thought oh he's complaining that his neck hurts uh, or that he can't breathe uh, okay I'll go ahead and take my knee off of him see what I'm saying it, it, it's it's and and again it, it's not because he's like oh he's black therefore I believe him less or he's white it's again it's unconscious right they're not thinking about the race it's just it just happens right it it just fucking happens and so and so this brings me to white privilege. Okay, that's that's another one that people don't understand. When people say white privilege, they're not saying that every white person is privileged, right? Like, like a poor white person living in Appalachia uh, is no, they're not privileged, right? But they do benefit from white privilege over as a group, right? Over black people, right? Or even over other minorities, uh, um, and. Because even though, like, like, so white privilege is saying if you have two individuals that have the same experiences, right? They're the same socioeconomic uh, uh, position. Uh, you know, they're both equally poor. Uh, maybe they were raised by one parent. If all, all else equal, the white individuals, because we live in, and, and other other people call it. Oh no, it's not white privilege. It's majority privilege. Sure, it, it just happens to be that the majority of people here in the United States are white, and so therefore it's called white privilege. Uh, um, so anyways, so because the United States, it, all the positions of power are are overwhelmingly held by other white people, right? It's essentially, white culture has, this, or, or yeah, well, white culture has established the, the culture of the United States it it's sort of it, it's there to sort of serve other white people more more so than like black individuals. See what I'm saying? So it, it's it's kind of hard to understand if if you haven't really sort of um, you know looked at if you haven't been looking at data and all of this. Um, it's it's kind of hard to understand. But but I do want to say right. So like instances of of that right when you when you're looking at overall body of evidence when you, when you're going to these this thing about the knee replacements how white individuals are more likely to receive the knee transplants or are less likely to die um uh you know in when they're hospitalized in black individuals this is part of white privilege right they get the benefit of the doubt they get the benefit of the doubt right if they complain about chest pain uh or any kind of pain doctors take them a little bit more seriously right unconsciously again doctors are not and again black doctors as well right black doctors as well so i don't know guys what do you guys think man do do you guys hate the term white privilege do you understand it do you don't get it do you just flat out deny it and if you deny it why why do you deny it right so uh, uh and you can ask me the same thing if it's true give me the evidence for it right and i mean i sort of alluded to it right that this is a big body of evidence of the way the white and black individuals are treated and and that's essentially that's white privilege right like just just simply that right that points to white privilege so let me know what you guys think guys let me know what you guys think uh you know what i'm letting you guys know the way i'm understanding these things the way i was i was taught to understand these things uh um maybe you don't agree let me know down in the comments anyways you like my video give me a thumbs up if you didn't like it give me a thumbs down i i, I said it before a thumbs down is better than no thumb up or down no thumb at all give it a give it a dislike if you didn't like it but if you did like it Thumb it up and also, hey, consider subscribing. Anyways, guys, till the next one, peace out.